Hello, how's it going? Today, I am going to be doing something a bit different. Uh, something that I don't usually do. Um, and that is a tech review. Um, I have been wanting to start one of these series for such a long time. And, but I never found the right time to do it. But now, I decided to do it. So, today, we are going to be reviewing, be reviewing a piece of tech which is pretty important when you're making YouTube videos. Of course, there's a lot of stuff that you need for making good YouTube videos. I mean, if you're a gamer, you need like keyboard, good computer, mouse, everything, microphone. Um, of course, a microphone is really important, uh, like this one right here. Um, I'll actually link this one in the video description if you want to see this one. Um, but if you don't know what this is, this is the Warm Audio VA87 XLR version. Um, but that is sort of stuff what you would obviously need. But of course, if you have to record face cam, you are not going to be... Um, well, how would you record face cam without a camera? Right, so today... I want to review uh, my camera of choice um, for a while. Um, I've been wanting to review this camera for such a long time, um, but I've never found the right time to do it. So today I decided to review my camera, which I use pretty much uh, every single day to record these videos. So now let's go back there and have a look at it. Here, okay, I'm going to move it a bit over here. And here it is. This is the Panasonic AF100. This, um, for most people, you would think this is a pretty old camera. Um, I mean, it's all, almost 10 years old by this point. And um, why, you, the most important question would be, why would I buy a 10-year-old camera? Well, first of all, this camera right here, even though, yes, it is pretty old, um, it does have some pretty good features which normal cameras or cameras fr from today would not have, really. Um, first of all, um, if, you, if you look at the back here, on the other side, I don't know how well you'll be able to see that. I'm kind of using the light up here. See that? These right here, these right here are two XLR inputs. So I, in theory, or well, I can, I could plug in two XLR microphones into this, and then I could have like two microphones set up, one here and one here while I'm talking. And that is a very good feature because of, like if I'm making a movie, I want, and I have this camera on a tripod, then obviously I don't want this to be, obviously I want there to be clean audio because even though this has an inboard microphone up here, uh, I'll get a close up shot on that. Um, unfortunately, that microphone is really, really terrible. It does not perform great. It does not give good audio, good clean audio. It does not give good clean audio. And it's a bit, it's a bit bad. If you don't like to use XLR, you can also come to the back here, you have some different, let me see if you can even see those. Well, you can't really see it, let me pull the camera kind of like this. Here, you do have some other options here, so if we pull out, no that's not one. Here, you can actually plug it in just a normal shotgun microphone as well. The cool thing about this camera is, it has interchangeable lenses, so you can put all kinds of different lenses on it, like cinema lenses and all kinds of stuff. Uh, and currently I have Panasonic's own lens here. It's the Lumix um, 40, 45 to, 50, to 150 millimeter lens. You can see it right there. I actually posted a picture on this on Instagram and this is a... And I'm going to be honest, this is a very crappy lens. This is not, um, I would not recommend, if you're going to buy any camera, I would not recommend buying this lens. This is, a, this is one of the most 
This is probably the worst lens that I've ever used. And now I'm gonna bring the camera closer to show you the actual lens on it. So, um, first of all, there's this little cap that goes on top here. And uh, some people would call this a sun filter, other people would call it just, uh, I don't know. But I am not too sure, to be honest, what this does, but it's just a plastic piece that goes on the front. But then if you take this off, there is the lens. So you can see it's a bit small. And that is because this is a cropped zoom lens. And so this, so this is not your typical lens that if you zoom it out, it goes way out and it stretches out re really far. No. This one just stretches about, so if, uh, if in theory, this would be filming right now from there, this picture would look like this to you. So that's why, uh, and that's kind of like a thing what I didn't look up on when I bought this. So make sure if you're buying a lens, make sure you buy the right lens and not buy a totally crappy lens because this one also didn't have the best doesn't have the best like uh, light distribu distribution as well. So um, if we're filming in low light, this is a very terrible lens for it. So anyway, continuing on forward. Now we're gonna get to this section. So here you can see all kinds of dials. So here you can change the lighting on. And what you will realize of this camera is, it's a very good camera, but it's a really hands-on experience. And so, in theory, now when I turn it on, if this would be any old XLR camera, this would look beautiful. Like right out of the bat, this would look great. But right now when I open this, it has a very terrible glare. And of course that fixes itself after a while, but it does take a while. Sometimes you have to like switch all these dials around to get the perfect look. And something that I've learned through all my time of using this camera is you will never get the perfect picture. If you're not a complete professional, you will never get the perfect picture out of this camera. Um, and that's kind of like the problem with I guess. Uh, that's one of the grabs that I have with the camera. But otherwise, um, the sensor or um, the little LCD screen here completely opens up like this. Then it flips around like this. So you can, then you can also shut it, shut it like this. So, it's a very nice thing that this has a flip out screen because the old one did not have one. The old one that I used to use did not have one. It's really great to have a very nice flip out screen. You can flip it in all kinds of directions. You can use it like this if you're like filming really low. You can put it like this if you're filming like normally or probably like this. And if you're having a big crew out, if you're like filming a movie and you have a big crew out, you can have like people standing here like two people seeing like sitting here or something and you can see what's going on on the screen so that's a very great thing jesus um yeah then in here there's all kinds of stuff you have the microphone dials um all kinds of other stuff that i pretty much don't know but here this is the brightness um so if you f make it if you do this if you turn it this way it goes darker if you turn that that way there it goes it becomes like uh, lighter. But here, this is the sensor change. So this camera has a total of four sensors. It has number one, number two, number three, and number four. And these just uh, get all, and all these sensors just become darker and darker. So if for instance, we have sensor number one here, you turn to sensor number two, it gets darker. And then after you turn it to sensor number three, it just gets like pitch black, I guess, if you're not too. If you're filming in low light or filming with no lights on. Now we're getting to the back of the camera. So here is some interesting stuff as well. So here is where the battery goes. And this is the big battery what you use for the Panasonic AF100 camera. That's how it looks. Wow. It's now look beautiful. And this is a very great battery. Not only because you can press that and then you can see how much charge we have. So currently we have two bars so that means that we have about uh we have about halfway to go with this camera camera then up here we have it up here is where you put your sd cards into so you open up this little latch like this and then these are in here and you can put in two of them and which is very great because panasonic used to use um these big p2 cards which are terrible because of 
they put one in. First of all, they were very expensive, and they had like 40, 40 seconds of runtime even, so it was very bad. Um, so, uh, but anyway, moving on. Uh, that's that. And here is your little eyepiece. This eyepiece, by the way, only works if you have the screen shut. So if you have, if you open up the screen, turn it on. And yeah, it does take up a little while to boot up because it's such a big camera. So now we have the screen like this. I shut it. And now I see the footage through the eyepiece. That's pretty much the camera. So all in all, it's a very great camera. Um, it works best for me. Um, I've tried all, all kinds of different cameras over the years. And this one is one, the one that works for me the best. Um, it's not really great for if you're like filming out in the wild and you're like walking around because this does shake around a lot. And we realized that while we were filming the last episode of Musk and Lina. We realized that and ever since we have not used this while we're out walking around and stuff. Uh, we have been using a different camera. But for stand alone shots and nature shooting, this is a very great camera to film with. And movies as well, which um, more movies you'll be seeing. Just I'm filmed by just this camera will be coming soon. So anyway, that's gonna be the end of this little video here. This was a lot of fun to make and hope hopefully I can make more of these in the future. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.